Hey there folks, Rel here, and this is your Raxium update for September 6, 2015. On Friday, a big patch was released with a lot of fun stuff worth looking at. Three new Empire-specific harasser and main battle tank secondary anti-vehicle weapons were released. That's the Gatekeeper for the TR, the Mjolnir for the NC, and the Aphelion for the VS. The Gatekeeper is meant to be a long-range weapon, while the other two are meant to be close-range. TR already had the Vulcan, NC had the Enforcer, and VS had the Saren, so the new weapons are meant to fill the gaps that were left in each faction's arsenal. A new Nanite Systems ground and air lock-on launcher was released that fires off three rounds per lock, has dual fire modes that fire either slow or fast projectiles with greater or lesser turning speeds depending on the situation, and we'll be taking a look at that in the future. I think a lot of the TR population will be happy to know that the Striker was also buffed, which reduced its Cone of Fire Bloom and Cone of Fire values in a couple of different ways. Definitely a much needed improvement to the weapon. For Lightnings and main battle tanks, the projectile velocities of both the Heat and HE rounds have been made equivalent to that of AP rounds. Really cool buff that makes non-AP weaponry at least a little bit more competitive against vehicles without really doing a whole lot to anti-infantry potential. An undocumented change that took place is that your score is no longer inflated by boosts or membership. You still get the bonus experience per usual, but the actual score is based on raw values now. The downside is that the bonus experience you're getting isn't showing up visually. Like I said though, you are still getting it, it just doesn't look like it. They are however working on a system that'll show that bonus experience according to a post by Lord Cosine, which is linked in the video description below, along with everything else that we've talked about today and a whole lot more that we're not going to talk about. Speaking of not talking about things, that's all I'm going to say for Planetside 2 stuff in this episode, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about what's been going on lately on my side of the monitor. So after I upgraded to Windows 10, my Nvidia drivers would frequently crash when trying to save Shadowplay files, and that's not very helpful when I'm trying to get footage to, you know, make videos with. So I ended up rolling back to Windows 8.1, or at least I tried, but my computer crashed a bunch of times while it happened and ended up needing to be refreshed in order to fix it, and I spent a lot of time last week just reinstalling, readjusting, getting everything back to where it is almost in working order. All my games were uninstalled along with anything that went through Steam, so my Bulletstorm saves were wiped out too, which means that the Bulletstorm Let's Play is on hold until I decide to go back through and replay until the part that we were at, so probably not going to do that for a while. Fortunately though, my Mass Effect 3 save files still exist, even though the game got wiped. Unfortunately, whenever I try to open Origin, it crashes, meaning that I can't actually play Mass Effect 3 until it's fixed, or until I find a workaround, so that Let's Play is on hold as well. We did, however, start playing through Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, and the first episode of that just came out Saturday, and another one came out today, so at least there's something that kind of can keep you going if you do enjoy the casual channel. There are a bunch of other issues too, like my Blue Yeti, which is my main microphone, it's the one that I normally record commentary on. It's recording echoes right now. I don't know why, but I can't use it. So I've been using my headset microphone, which is also going on the fritz, and it, it will occasionally do like a really, really staticky, really noisy background audio, and I can't do anything about it until it decides to fix itself. Also, my Windows 8.1 key suddenly invalidated itself during the rollback process, and now I have to buy a new one. But the good news is that I do have a new computer on the way, and provided I can get everything working again on this rig, I should be able to use it for a dedicated streaming rig, which means that I could actually start streaming Planetside 2 again, which would be awesome. Anyway, that's where we are with things right now. Some frustrating setbacks, but we'll get everything back in good shape here soon. And if this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you have anything newsworthy to share, go ahead, leave it in the comment section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.